Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're back at it with another TikTok reaction video. A lot of you guys sent me some amazing TikToks to react to, so I'm excited to get to it today. Again, this is me just trying to give a more healthy and mature perspective on a lot of these TikToks that maybe aren't the greatest advice or are just a little bit toxic. So let's get started. Okay, it says me vibing and finally texting someone new. Ugh. Okay, so basically this is like when you have broken up with someone and you are trying to meet new people, you're trying to get over that last person and then that last girl is like in the background lingering, you're still thinking about her or she texts you or something like that. And I see this happen a lot and I think it's because sometimes when you break up with someone, you don't take the necessary precautions to make sure that you're in a place where you'll be able to get over them. So maybe you didn't block her, maybe you're still following her online, maybe she still talks to you and you text her. Um, and it's very hard to get over someone and meet someone new and give yourself an opportunity or a chance to meet someone new when you're still so focused or not over that last person. So I do think in order to avoid, you know, getting with a rebound or the next person you're with being a rebound, you really have to give yourself room and time to heal from that last relationship. And honestly, a lot of the time they always come back. It's like when they know you're getting over them and talking to new people, they like come back in, they swoop back in. Um, and you know, try to weasel their way back into your life. And I think you really have to think about the fact that if you want to move on and be with someone new and you know, have all those other opportunities, you have to get over that last person. I also think if you're not over that last person, it's not really fair for you to try to talk to other people and like be serious with other people because then you're just using that person as a rebound to get over someone else and that's never fun for anyone. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, I see this happen a lot with men and women. It's a tricky place to be in. Okay. Oh, it's another one about an ex. It says me on my way to bother my ex who still loves me every time something bad happens in my love life. Now, isn't this just a tale as old as time? So you're trying to move on or you have moved on and then when you're bored or when things aren't going well, you hit up your ex because they're convenient and there and you know they'll text you back. I see so many girls do this. I know that men do it too. Um, and again, it's just that using someone is never a good thing, right? You don't wanna just call up your ex because things aren't going well for you and you wanna rebound or a backup option or someone who's convenient. I think that's not productive for you or for your ex. Um, and if you're only hitting them up when something bad's happening, like it's clear where they stand with you or where they should stand with you. So I don't recommend doing this, but I think a lot of people do it to have like a roster or a backup option. And I think for a lot of people, the reason people do this is because it makes it a lot easier to get over someone or to like feel better about your situation if you know that you have a backup option or know that your ex is gonna be around waiting for you. And I don't think that's productive. And if you are an ex, I don't think you should be doing that with your ex. So just something to consider. I don't think it's healthy. Okay, just before it gets started, it says things that give me the opposite of an ick. So an ick is something that's like surface level that you pick out about someone. It's often something very stupid, like the way someone sneezes or something like that, that gives you the ick. Um, so she's saying the opposite of the ick. So things that she finds attractive in men. Okay, let me go through these. Let me just read them off as they play. So it says, when they say we are or us, oh, instead of I, yeah, because they're including you. Um, plans, trip, itineraries. Okay, so even something as simple as like making a reservation or planning what you guys are going to do is really attractive. Grabs you by the waist. Girls love that. Well, like if they know it's coming and maybe if you're in a relationship with him, maybe not if you're just a stranger on the street, don't go up to a girl and just grab her waist and be like, Courtney Ryan said you would love this. No, don't, don't do that. Only if you're in a relationship with someone or if you're talking to someone, okay? Um, reversing a car, okay. What is it about a man reversing a car or like using one hand on the wheel that is so attractive? Like, honestly, Crystal. What do you think? Like, what, do, is that attractive to you? Like when Teddy has one hand on the wheel and he's like reversing and he does it seamlessly, I'm like. It's, they're confident in. in and they're like in control of the situation. I'm talking to my producer right now, asking her why she thinks this is attractive too, because I think I'm not alone in feeling, you feel this way too. Yes. 
It's like when a guy has control of a situation, you feel safe when he's got it under control. It's like a confidence thing. I don't know, it's like swag, I don't know. It's really attractive, that's all I'm gonna say. Crystal agrees with me, it's true. Drive safe, but obviously, you know, just know that. Um, hugs from behind, again, only if you're talking or in a relationship, don't go up to a random girl and hug her from behind. I was at the gym one time and I was sitting on the ground doing abs and this guy came up behind me and started massaging my shoulders. I had never met this man. It was the strangest thing that has ever happened to me at the gym. Not a good way to approach a girl at the gym. I was like, what the heck? Who the heck are you? Don't touch me. Like, and I'm not really, I don't get offended when people approach me or say anything to me. I think it's flattering, but to come up and touch me immediately, no. Okay, what else? A bit of playful jealousy. Yeah, I think a little dose of jealousy every now and then can be healthy for, you know, showing that you care about them or whatever. But normally the line crosses a little bit too far and I wouldn't recommend that. I think it's important to be confident and secure in yourself and not be jealous. Um, okay, that was it. But yeah, I mean, I agreed with most of those. So gentlemen, take notes. Okay, this says, if a dude ever says I don't deserve you, you've got about 10 business days before he proves why that statement is 100% correct. So this is very true. And I think the same thing goes for men and women. It's often because of some insecurity or self-esteem problems, but also people looking for external validation and attention. And they're trying to get you to say, no, you're amazing. Like you're the best and give them that reassurance that they need. But honestly, a lot of the time that is just a sign that they cannot create that for themselves and something's wrong. And I think if you're constantly looking for validation and attention from other people, there's something wrong within you. Not necessarily wrong, but something that you need to work on within yourself um, in order to be in a healthy relationship. Because looking for that external validation and attention constantly is, you know, a one-way ticket to things not working out. So I do think it's important to have a solid, good foundation with yourself before you enter into a relationship. And that's kind of why you get 10 business days to see why something's not going to work out because it's often a sign that there's something not right. So definitely true, kind of funny, but true. Oh no. Great, okay, this literally says ways to mess with a guy's head. Why are we doing this? I'm gonna read these, but why are we doing this? Okay, I can't see it, so I'm gonna bring it up. Text him, good morning, let him answer, and don't respond after. Okay. Call him, let it ring twice, and hang up. Tell him you're with a friend. Have a conversation and just stop responding. Text him to come over and then just don't answer. Post that you're clubbing, then shut your phone off. Text him, are you here yet? Oh, like it's meant to go to someone else. Don't post on social media for a week. Order your favorite drink and a whiskey neat, then take a picture and post it. Okay. I'm not even gonna go into those individually because it's all just messed up. If you are creating these diabolical little weird plans in order to make someone jealous, trick someone, make someone trip over you, you have issues that you need to work on because if you are self-confident, if you have high self-esteem, if you know what you bring to the table and you're secure with yourself, you simply do not have time for these little stupid games. I would never go out of my way or waste my time to do any of those things on this. So if a girl's doing this to you, goodbye. If a guy's doing this to you, goodbye, waste of time. Playing games is for immature, insecure people and we don't have time for that here. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It says, my feelings for him leaving my body as soon as he likes another female's post. Yep, and another reason why I tell you guys not to do this. I think it's incredibly disrespectful, especially if you're in a relationship with a girl, to be liking photos, inappropriate nude, lingerie, whatever it is, of other girls. And even just like other girls that you don't know. Like if you follow a bunch of models, Instagram models or whatever that don't know you or don't follow you back, it's kind of embarrassing to be giving them validation and attention when you have a girlfriend. If you're single, do what you want. I would still be picky about who you follow if you're single because you don't want to look like a that's just thirsty following a bunch of girls. I think when you're in a relationship, it's kind of a whole different ball game and it's just disrespectful. And it's gonna make the girl feel like you're disrespecting her. It's gonna make her upset whether she says it or not. And I just don't think it's a good thing to do. Things I said to men when I was still single and in my villain phase. Okay, she said things I've said 
Things I said to men when I was still single and in my villain phase. I'm not bored enough to talk to you right now. Your free trial has expired. Can you put in a good word for me to your best friend? I'm not angry, I just think less of you. <laughs> Don't worry, I would never date someone like you. <laughs> Again here, what is the point? If you don't want to be with someone, just don't be with them. You don't have to be a villain. You don't have to trick them or say, put in a good word with me with your best friend. Why? Just be honest. Don't play the games. If a girl said this to you, I would just tell you not to talk to her anymore. Simple as that. Don't waste your time. What is something you used to strongly believe in that you no longer believe in at all? Being a strong, independent woman. I don't do that anymore. I'm a damsel in distress, okay? I can absolutely take care of myself, but I don't want to. Okay, so she said she no longer believes in being a strong, independent woman. She's a damsel in distress. She can take care of herself, but she doesn't want to. I think this is something that a lot of women are realizing. They maybe have taken on that more masculine role, the provider role, um, and it seems okay in the beginning, but I think a lot of girls get sick of that after a while and want to be in the more feminine role, uh, more nurturing role, whatever it is, stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home wife, or working part-time, or whatever it is. I mean, everyone's situation looks different. Not everyone wants to be a girl boss CEO, and I think that's okay. But I think that our modern culture has kind of made us feel shameful about that, or kind of have made women feel bad about not wanting to work because of this like girl power, girl boss movement. Um, but I think a lot of women are tired of doing that, and I think, we were sold a lot of lies when it comes to that. Of course, I think it's great that we're able to, you know, do everything that men do, have our own decisions, make our own choices, make our own income, vote, everything like that. Feminism originally was an amazing thing for women, but I do think modern feminism and this girl boss, I don't need a man uh, kind of culture has made us tired. I think a lot of women are just tired of doing that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it if you are. You don't have to be a girl boss CEO to be a strong woman. I think. Uh, being a strong woman has a lot more to do with your character versus what you do for work or the fact that you don't need a man. So keep that in mind. Is it cheating to follow Instagram models when you have a girlfriend? No. Why? Because it doesn't fucking mean anything. Are you really that insecure that you're threatened by pixels on the screen? So then you wouldn't be threatened if your girlfriend posted half-naked pics, right? How is that the same? So what this, what this girl does, what this creator does, is she takes controversial topics and she sets it up like it's a dialogue between her and a man. So this is scripted, but I think it's really interesting because a lot of men act like this. So it's not cheating if they're following a bunch of Instagram models or liking half-naked photos, but it's the end of the world if their girlfriend posts a photo like that. And to that, I would say, if you don't want someone to do something to you, don't do it to them. If she thinks, okay, well, he's liking all this content, Clearly this is the content he likes. If I post it though, it's the end of the world. Like that's kind of being a hypocrite a little bit. If you don't want your girlfriend posting content like that, don't like that type of content. Don't interact with that type of content. It's embarrassing when your boyfriend does that and makes you look bad. So again, don't be a hypocrite. If you don't want your girlfriend posting that kind of content, don't interact with that type of content and don't like it. It's really that simple. All right, guys, that is all I have for today's video. If you liked it or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. Again, I just try to give a healthy, mature perspective on some of these videos I see on TikTok. Of course, not all of them are bad, um, but I do think sometimes they're a little interesting or toxic or maybe just not the best advice for young, impressionable people on the app. So I know these are entertaining, but I also think it could be a little bit enlightening um, to know these things when you're going into dating someone or even when you're looking at the way that you behave in dating situations or life in general. So just something to keep in mind. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.